Hello everyone. I decided to try something a little different this time, as seems to be my normal. I've decided that since I'm really kind of busy right now and I'm dealing with a lot of things, I'm going to try something a little simpler and it's going to be as I see it. And it's a series where I watch a series episode by episode and talk about each episode as I go through it. Now, I'm starting with the American Horror Story, which I have not seen this before. I would prefer doing a series that I have not seen before, but I'm going to tackle things like the Tremor series and maybe even the Nightmare Cafe and talk about each of those so you get a better idea. But I want to do this as a progressive thing, so as I'm going through each episode, I can give my thoughts and kind of build up from there. And if you're watching this for the first time and you want someone that you can kind of get some ideas bounce around or consider this like a conversation even where it's just basically me talking about the episodes that I watch and kind of getting off of my well in this case getting a lot of stuff set into place because there was a lot that happened in that pilot episode and I'm talking about season one of American Horror Story with the uh, whole gimp thing, which, wow, they they didn't pull any punches getting something sexual out, did they? <sighs> there is so much weird stuff that happened in this, and one of the things that I noticed after I was done watching the film, film, God, I'm doing the whole movie review thing again. It's done way too many of those, but I just, uh, for my own sake, I've got the list of cast members here, because there's a few names to remember, and this was interesting. I noticed that characters who were not a part of the immediate Harmon family only appear in the house. I have not seen uh, Constance, Addie, or Tate outside of the Harmon house. And there was uh, Larry, Larry Harvey. He was not actually a part of the house, but he did uh, show up there at first. I think that it's because he is actually trying to help the family that he... It seems like he's not a part of it. Oh, there was also uh, Myra O'Hare, the uh, housekeeper. Uh, the thing with Larry is, I think, because he is trying to help the family, it makes more sense that he's not attached to the house. It feels like these people who are really odd in their own ways, whether it's their personality or things they can do, it seems like they are directly linked and almost restrained by the house. Uh, I don't like any of those people, to be honest with you. The one I probably dislike the least is Moira, but I still do not like her. And I know she is doing something well, it's obvious that she's doing something, but I don't understand what her end goal is with this. I'm almost wondering if everyone that the Harmon family has encountered is designed to break them, almost in a Silent Hill manner, where they are tempted and tested and broken in various ways, because it seems like Tate is specifically targeting Violet. Uh, you've got Ben, who... Well, Tate's kind of doing something with him, but he's... He's probably going to be around with other members. Um, oh, God, i got to try and process all this information. Oh... But yeah, Tate went with Ben and started doing stuff, but Moira is really connected to Ben. She's doing the whole temptation thing, which I don't know how she was able to change her age. I'm sure that will come up later. 
maybe be explained or just be hinted at. Uh, Constance. Damn. Constance is definitely going after Vivian, but it seems like she's almost overseeing everything that's going on in the house based on her interaction with Ben and Moira. I don't know if she has any connection to Tate other than the house. Uh, Addie, who I really do not like, she is definitely connected to Vivian, but I can also see that she is going to play some kind of role in all this. And then there are the bizarre images of ghosts, or at least I'm assuming they are ghosts, but then again, with horror, you never know. There was that old woman with the fangs that Tate seemed to summon or be possessed by, and in the beginning, I think there was like a, a man baby or something coming after the boys. The two ginger kids that got killed off. Uh, yeah, there, there's... So much was thrown up in the air on this that it will either pique your interest or just confuse you to the point you don't want to uh, deal with it anymore. And I can't blame you for that. I'm trying to process all that happened there because it was very creepy... At some parts, it it was borderline scary, but it wasn't something that necessarily made me jump out of my seat. But it did well up a lot of emotion, mostly uh, anger and fear. Uh, there was also some frustration, because I, I am connecting with the Harmon family, and I feel that the, there wasn't any bad acting whatsoever from anyone there. But with that said, because this is a pilot and it left a lot up in the air, there's also a lot that needs to be explored. And through that explanation, exploration, we might get a little more idea of who these characters are supposed to be, and that will really tell whether they are acting appropriately or not, because the portrayal could be bad depending on what the character is supposed to be, because, like, Addie, I don't know that much about her. Constance, I barely know anything about. Moira, I know a little bit about Tate, but... Mm, to an extent, I'm not sure how much of what I've learned is a lie, and how much is real. Because these seem to be very manipulative characters. The Harmon family feels very genuine in everything they're doing. I definitely like the interaction between Ben and Violet. It did feel very real at times. But with that said, this initial episode was very bizarre and intense. I'm glad that there were commercial breaks when it aired, because if there wasn't, it'd probably have a lot of people trying to catch their breath in the middle of this whole chaos, because it, it does not let up. The only time it would ever hit the brakes is when there is a commercial going on or when the credits roll, and even then, it's just like, my heart is still pounding. It's a... Whew. Yeah, I, I really don't know what to say about this. It's, it's different, which I can see is why a lot of people would have gotten on board with it. It's not the typical kooky, creepy shit. It does get a little cheesy, campy, and just... Uh, sometimes it feels very unrealistic when you've got characters that their personality suddenly explodes. Like that one uh, high school girl that her mom died of cancer because of cigarette smoke, but she's also wanting cocaine, and is... I mean, I can understand why she want cocaine, but she explodes on the girl for smoking. There's, there's kind of a double standard going there, and I'm wondering uh, if we're going to get some more development from that character, or if she's just going to be completely abandoned. 
the creepiness that a lot of these characters are putting off towards the Harmon family is a bit off-putting because it makes me feel uncomfortable. And considering I really couldn't settle into anything during this initial episode, it's really going to be difficult to tell where this goes. And I know that uh, something that's unsettling is really what is supposed to happen in or show of this nature, but you have to be careful that there is a balance, and this felt unbalanced to me, uh, it was probably the best term for it, it's on for so much that you having a difficult time grasping anything, it's like sliding down the side of a slippery cliff, you're having trouble finding anything to grab onto, and process what's going on, so you really have to wait till it's all over before you can figure out what actually happened. So yeah, a lot of questions that need to be answered, like, what the hell is going on with Addie and Constance? What are these mysterious powers that Moira has? What are the voices that Ben is hearing and other owners have heard? Uh, oh yeah, uh, who are those weird ghosts, or whatever they are, the man baby and the uh, old woman? A lot of things I'm hoping get answered, or at least explored to the point where I could kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at, because it's very abstract right now, so I'll just have to keep watching in order to find out. While I was at work, I had a little more time to think about the first episode, and I realized there was something very important I didn't talk about. It was the fight scene between... Uh, let me just double-check the names here. I <laughs> know, to you, it would have been pretty quick. Uh, Vivian and Ben. There were some important points there I wanted to address. Uh, could sway people's opinion on what I feel, but thing is, I see the argument that they had, and I see the two sides, and I'm kind of on the fence with both Vivian and Ben, because I understand the points that they're making, and I do agree with their points, but I also see that there are some very big problems. They're, they're definitely flawed characters, but they still have some things that were not entirely unreasonable. In the case of Vivian, I understand. She felt betrayed by Ben for having that affair. She lost a child, a child that was inside of her, and had to carry that around and give birth to it, and it was dead the whole time. I can empathize with that. I understand where she's coming from, from the pain that she's going through. But I also have to side with Ben, because even though Vivian was the one who had the child within her, it feels like she is using that as a crutch or an excuse where she's essentially saying because she was the one who had to go through the the entire physical process, she's the only one who could understand the emotional process of it all. But I do not agree with that. Ben was still going to be a father. He was going to help raise this child. They both lost a child. It's not just Vivian. Ben did too. Ben must have had plans for what he was going to do and was very excited for this new life to come into his life and expand his family. That still does not forgive his having an affair and his incredible obsession with sex. Less than a year? Okay. First of all, when most people lose a child, sex is not something you normally do for a very, very long time. It's difficult for you just to stay together because of how 
emotional things get. And you, <clears throat> you had a child, and that child was gone before you even had a chance to know who he or she was. That pushes people apart. Now, I would admit, if Vivian had gotten that dog and was using her dog for the comfort and caring that would help her get through this hard time, then she was neglecting Ben because they needed to be together for this, and that dog just drove a bigger wedge between them. It's still... It, it, I am not forgiving Ben whatsoever for that affair, though. And his sexual urges are taking a very emotional toll on him. He is... He needs to get himself under control. And it's clear that he's got some very deep problems that he needs to sort out himself. And then there's the one thing neither one of them mentioned. <clears throat> and this is the one that may have more bearing than most people realize. Violet. Neither of them mentioned Violet. In fact, you know very little about how Violet feels about all this. You know she's in pain. You know she's suffering. You know that she's lashing out and fighting back. She is not happy. She is miserable. And she's cutting herself. She's smoking. She's misbehaving, fighting. Now, granted, the fight wasn't really her fault. I hate that bitch. But anyway, Violet, we don't know anything about what this was like for her. And if Vivian and Ben were driving themselves apart, what happened to Violet? You essentially are in a house divided. And if your parents aren't even talking to themselves, what are they doing with Violet? She could have been essentially in a house with dead parents. They're there, but they're not really alive. They're just bodies. <clears throat> Which explains a bit of her... separation from them and the fact that they're not even really addressing that I'm seeing Vivian and Ben are very self-centered and that's a huge problem for them that's a huge problem for Violet and <laughs> it's weird to think that they were fucked up before they got to the house because now God only knows what will happen with them at least I don't know what's going to happen I, I haven't seen the whole series yet but the thing is that was a very eye opening moment and I think maybe a lot of people from this point did not get the kind of depth that I got from it because if you haven't thought about Violet when it comes to that conversation, then maybe there are some things that are being revealed here very early on that aren't as much a mystery as they are something to build off of. It is laying a foundation, a very strong foundation, and it's interesting that Violet is kept out of the fray, and yet still square in the middle of her own fight and I don't know what role Tate is going to play in this but I know that he is probably going to play a similar role in this as Moira but I don't know how far that's going to go but I thought about this at work and I realized oh god I should have talked about this and that's why I wanted to come back and add this to the end of the video so hope you tune into the next episode because I'm really not sure what to think about this first one. I know that it's interesting. It is well acted from what I can tell. It is well written from what I have seen. I just don't know what they're going to do going forward. 
<laughs> it, it's amazing to me thinking of how many seasons there are of this series because I got a lot of work to do in that case. So, see you in the next one.